Hey, welcome everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in San Francisco at Moscone West and Broadcast Alley for RSA Conference 2023. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Dave Vellante is flying in. We're here for four days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We're kicking it off on day one with J.T. Patel, Executive Vice President of Collaboration Security at Cisco Systems. CUBE alumni, great to see you. Thanks for coming in, kicking up. You got a big keynote, we're going to do a little preview. You know, by the way, I love the fact that you just, in RSA, you walk around, and you and I weren't scheduled, so you just kind of flagged <laughs> me and said, let's get on, and this is great. So uh, yes, we have a keynote today, we're excited. Yeah. And uh, I think RSA is one of those iconic events for security where um, you know, you just get to meet all of the old friends and colleagues and it's, well, it's fantastic. Well, serendipitous, as you know, it's all about serendipity. One, yep. 13 years doing theCUBE, uh, having CUBE alumni, and we're right next to the keynote dry run green room, so <laughs> all the top talents welking by, so <laughs> thanks for it. Well, thank you for having me. And I know you're super busy, let's get into it. So you got a keynote coming up. Um, before we get into that, Cisco's obviously a big player in security. You run two big groups within Cisco. Um, collaboration, which includes all video and workflows around that, and then obviously security, two of the hottest areas. You know, they'll, they'll give the job to anyone these days. Uh, <laughs> but, a lot of pressure. <laughs> no, it's actually, it's a privilege to be there, and um, you know, uh, we are here to talk about security, but I think hybrid work actually has a fair amount to do with security as well, because as, as people work from anywhere on any device, yeah. um, you know, uh, the attack surface is just going to get larger and larger, and uh, the attacks are getting more sophisticated, so security plays a pretty big role on the hybrid work side as well, and also on the security side. But it's, it's interesting to see what's happening right now in the market. So as companies move to hybrid, multi-cloud world, um, I think there's a, an appetite for customers to say, hey, wouldn't it be nice to have a neutral kind of um, company that can abstract networking and security so that you can actually yeah. acquire and steer any and all traffic across any of the cloud providers? Because yeah. I think there's going to be four major computers in the world, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and you know, a private data center of some sort. And um, each one of them right now have their own compute stack, storage stack, network stack, and um, uh, security stack. And we'd like to make sure that we abstract networking and security and act as a layer above all of that. Yep. And if we do that, I think there'll be a, um, a f fair amount of kind of you know, efficiency in making sure that you can actually drive um, workloads across any of those cloud providers while still maintaining the policy yeah. structure for security. What's also interesting too, you were on the Mobile World Congress Cube, for the folks yeah. watching, check that out, Mobile World Congress coverage. That's telecom, that's the pipes. So abstracting away, Cisco's obviously businesses and networking over the years, legacy. As you move up the stack in this abstraction, you got bolt-ons and you got abstraction. So a lot going on there, and then you got the large language models, multimodal AI has hit the scene. That's only going to accelerate. I know Cisco's done a lot with machine learning, so yeah. it's not a new concept to Cisco. AI, though, now is becoming a consumable opportunity uh, that people are starting to get their arms around. So all this pre present, presents a perfect storm of innovation. And security now, we're going to hear a lot here, developer first, developer centric, offense, defense, what's your, how do you look, look at the current state of the, the market right now? Look, I think, I think if you think about the state of security, firstly, it's about 3,500 vendors in the space. Um, no one owns any kind of dominant share in the market. It's a highly fractured market, and I think what's starting to happen now is, especially because of AI, the attacks are also going to get more sophisticated. And so we need to make sure that there's, um, there's a mechanism to have much more of a platform approach rather yeah. than just a point solution approach that can have, you know, we have this concept of cross-domain native telemetry that can actually go out and solve for uh, sophisticated attacks. But in AI, what's really important is there's going to be three factors that fundamentally change in security as a result of AI. Number one, you're going to see the experience get meaningfully altered. I think there's going to be experience. Gone are the days where you just have a mouse as a point of input. You'll actually have large language models where you'll have natural language and command line prompts will be a very, very kind of uh, interesting way to do things. And it'll be much more conversational in nature, so that's one. Number two is you'll see the efficacy of security go up quite a bit. And number three is the efficiency of yeah. everyone, the SOC analyst, the CISO, the, uh, the practitioner, <laughs> that's going to go up. It's a, I, I love what you're going with this because I just, I just think it's so fascinating because both offense and defense have the advantage too. So exactly the bad right. guys are going to be just as good with AI as the company. So a lot, a lot of things going on. Let's take with the, this prompt engineering kind of vibe yep. with, the, yep. with the AI right now. It's super hot. You hear prompt engineering, prompting chat GPT as an example. Then you get prompt operations and then you hear about prompt tuning. So it reminds me of the DevOps movement. Okay, yeah. you got prompt engineering, uh, ops, tuning sure. is more self-healing. So a lot of these concepts around automation are coming forward. Um, undifferentiated heavy lifting is a concept that's well known in the cloud. So as AI starts coming in, 
Security's not a place where people experiment. They don't want hallucinations. No. Ops is super valuable. So this is important. This is the distinction between, the, forget the copyright issues, that's a whole nother ball game. Yeah. But more people are writing code from AI, so now you have code pollution coming in. That's going to change the observability game. That's going to change the trust equation for networks. It's almost like mind blowing. As you look at that, that's what you're looking at now. Yeah, I think we, uh, the way that we're thinking about AI, firstly, we have to think about it from a responsible AI framework perspective, because there's going to be a fair amount of upside with AI. There's also going to be some pretty significant downsides, and you have to make sure that you can actually match for both. But there's three things that I think in AI are important to keep in mind uh, as, as this market evolves. The first one is the model itself, right? And what you're starting to see with models now is, if you have three different models and you feed it the same kind of data, largely the, the substantial kind of core of what you're getting back as insight is not that different, yeah. you know? Um, but what's different is, if any one of those models is fed even a little bit more unique data, specialized data, you're going to see a step function improvement in the insight that you get from it. So the first one is the model, the second is, the data itself. What's the custom set of data that you're going to provide that's specialized? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, in security, you're going to have security data that's going to be native telemetry for security. You're going to have you know, any kind of playbooks that you might have that you'll, you'll feed in. So human knowledge will be pretty important to yeah. enter in. And then the third one is experience. Yeah. And when all these three come together, yeah. I think magic starts to happen. Yeah. You know. And I think, what, that's a great point. I want to, not to circle back to Cisco, sound like it's a the Cisco commercial, but the unification is going to be the key part of all this. When you look at data, so proprietary yeah. data is an intellectual property. That's, that's right. kind of being talked about right now that's right. in some of the elite circles and the thought leadership. So that's, that makes a lot of sense to me. But when you have it integrated, where you can actually move it around in a way that's tied into workflows yeah. or systems. The way we think about it is it has to be correlated, not just aggregated. You know, and if you think about an attack kill chain yeah. from a MITRE attack framework, what does it look yeah. like? Well, you start something in an email, yeah. you have a link in an email that actually takes you to a website, website downloads a piece of code onto your endpoint, that then spawns a process on the endpoint. Before you know it, you've actually had that malware now starting to traverse the network. You look at that entire chain, if you look at each one of those domains, email, web, endpoint, network, as individual domains, you only get half the picture. Yeah, exactly. And so what you need to have is something that's actually going to be correlated across all of those domains, so you got a much more end-to-end -end picture. Bespoke and, and siloed is not the answer. It's you not the be answer some, anymore. Some sort of connective tissue. If they're decoupled, you have to be unified. Yep. That's going to change the uh, uh, identity access zero trust equation. That's going to change the data protection in the passwords market. And that's going to open up cloud native, cloud native networking for developers, which is a, a hot area that's not really talked much about this show, but you're starting to see signs of the new trend where developers are driving the change and they're the new consumer. So we're calling it B to D, business yeah. to developer. And if you win that equation, I don't say win, but if the developers adopt something, at the, at the coding point of coding, exactly security is built in from the beginning, not just shift left, but programming data. It's a prompt is a call. We think of it as policy as code, right? And if you have a security policy that actually you know, embed into the code itself, you're just going to be, protected all the way uh, up top. And so I think what's going to happen is there's a shift left movement yep. where the developers will have it. There's also going to be um, you know, a shift right movement where you'll actually okay. see a fair amount of kind of you know, um, um, you know, security kind of prevention mechanisms that are taken even for the SOC analysts, for the CISO, for the IT operator. So we're going to have policy SecOps? <laughs> Data SecOps? No, so that's because basically infrastructure as code is make the infrastructure programmable. <laughs> exactly. Make it invisible, Across abstract the away the complexity to make it easier. Yep. If data becomes programmable, you can almost go to that next level and connect the dots and say, it's, it's, it's hard and top and it's, it's abstracted away. And I think this goes back, look, this goes back to this whole notion of making sure that you have a platform. Because yeah. when you have a platform and you've got multiple sources of telemetry in the platform, security is no longer going to be a game that can be won with human scale. Yeah. It has to be machine scale. And in order to have machine scale, you can't have isolated defenses by domain. Yep. You have to have cross-domain defenses that actually have correlation, not aggregation. Yeah. Uh, as you know what's interesting, about, I, I love this whole AI thing, and the, I mentioned before, um, um, prompt tuning. Yes. There's a lot of papers going out right now. You can see a lot of, I've read more academic papers in the past it's six kind of fun weeks though, isn't it? in the past yeah. than in the six years. More hitting the table, but this idea of tuning is like self-healing. 
this is a network concept, it's not, this is not new. Now you take it to data where you have, okay, if I'm looking at say policy changes on the fly, I have service mesh if you're cloud native. If, you have, if you're standing up and tearing down services, whether they're network services or data services, you got to have that intelligence. This has become a kill, killer air, this is new. It, it's, it's new and I think there's, there's a lot of exciting possibilities that are going to be there in how you can automate and reimagine the SOC how you can reimagine a policy engine, yeah. how you can reimagine setting policies for, yeah. Um, yeah. for organizations. I mean, these are all things that have been relatively hard and cumbersome to do. And one of the big challenges that we as a security industry have had is, I think yeah. there's like four million jobs that go unfilled every year just in the US. Uh, we need to make sure that we can actually somehow figure out a way to augment AI to the talented skill sets that we have and pull it all together. And it's, uh, I, I think the future possibilities are very exciting but you have to keep in mind the downsides, and that's why responsible AI frameworks are going yeah. to be pretty important as well. I want to get into your keynote, a little preview. I don't want to reveal it too much. I know it's the afternoon, but you got to come I, see it, I man. I want to get into the collaboration side because I know your hybrid work is big, a lot of video, WebEx, et cetera, it's platform and security. But there's also a collaboration aspect on this on the security side, sharing data, sharing uh, incidents. Um, that culture is changing. Right. Can you share your thoughts on that? And it, it may not be a direct correlation to something you're doing within Cisco, but the notion of collaboration is more important in this industry than ever before. Well, I'll give you an example where that works really well. If you think about XDR, Extended Detection and Response, what is XDR? IDC has a great definition for it, it's three things. XDR is you take telemetry from multiple sources and ingest it, operative word being multiple, you then conduct analytics on it, and then you make sure that you can effectively detect, respond, and remediate to threats. Now, detection without remediation is insufficient, and remediation without detection is impossible, mm -hmm. right? And so, how do you make sure that you actually tie all of this together in an effective <laughs> way? And in XDR, one of the things that we've done, going back to your question of like, what are you doing with collaboration, is when you detect a threat, and there's an automatic orchestration that needs to happen of a response and a remediation action, that can actually spawn a conversation in a chat interface right from within yeah. your, um, yeah. your SOC kind of uh, you know, center it's that you have. point of attack, point of real time, That's right. at that exact moment. That's the dream of data, it, it, real time. You, you have to make sure that the time to investigation compresses as much as you can so that the de delta between detection and response yeah. Yeah is not days or months, yeah. it's actually hours and minutes. And all, obviously all the database actually stuff, minutes all the real time hours. information, having that time series, all unified killer. All right, so let's get to the keynote. Give us a preview of what you're going to talk about. I know you're doing a dry run, going back in there now to do a dry run, get ready for your talk. What's the main talk track? What's, what's the main message? Well, I think the, the main message is around this whole notion of the era of point solutions that have isolated telemetry, uh, I think is no longer tenable. And the reason for that is one simple reason. Is if you think about attacks today compared to attacks even three, four, five years ago, it's hard to decipher and it's going to get harder with AI to decipher what is a normal course of activity that John is conducting mm -hmm. to go about his day yep. and what is in fact a breach that is starting to occur. And it'll be hard to tell between those two. For example, if you look at the Nigerian prince, right? Not a real guy. But when you looked at the Nigerian prince giving you kind of um, an offer to say, I'll give you 10 million bucks, John, if you just click on this link, it was very easy to decipher that the Nigerian prince was not a real person because there was spelling mistakes, <laughs> there was a bunch of, now, attacks are going to be much more bespoke. Hey, John, yeah. you happen to be at your, your daughter's um, basketball game yesterday. Great to see you there. By the way, click on this link because yeah. we've got some pictures for you to download. Yeah. Or a job, app, a job a description from a fake a recruiter. Exactly. That's, that was the double supply chain hack that we reported on SiliconANGLE this weekend. This new supply chain, whether it's workflows, spear phishing, whatever workflow, they're, they're now going to come in multiple combinations. They more do, complexity. And, I, and I do feel like there's this notion of, we have to make sure that we get ahead of it uh, and not just um, you know, look at this from a, uh, the, the attacks are going to get more bespoke. Yeah. They're going to get, they're gonna, there's going to be nuance. There's going to have to be some level of subtlety in determining an attack versus just normal course of action. And that cannot happen. I'll give you another example. End-to-end -end encryption is going to be very hard to go out and um, you know, look, uh, allow you to look inside a packet. So deep packet inspection is much harder to do. So the only way that in the future you'll be able to do uh, what's traversing a network is not by looking inside a packet, but looking at the pattern of movement off the packet and infer from that whether or not that pattern of movement has yeah. anomaly to yeah. it. 
Yeah, and going to make it more complex and harder for the bad guys, but they're going to be smart right. too. That's right, that's right. All right, final question for you. I know you got to go, and I appreciate your time. What's going on at Cisco? How's business? Uh, what's the update? What's with your customers? What are they thinking about? What are the conversations you're having? Cisco performance, business update, and then what are the conversations you're having with your customers? Well, we've, uh, you know, Cisco is a great place to work, by the way. I, I um, having been there, it's such a privilege, and uh, we just got voted again, one, one more time, the best place to work. Um, and, you know, if you think about what's happening, we are ha having innovation on multiple different fronts. So if you, th what are, we think of this as, what are the core basic human rights? Well, the ability to connect is a core basic human right. The ability for people uh, to be safe and secure while they're connecting is another core basic human right. And the right to privacy is a core basic human right. And those are the three things that we're working yeah. on very closely. We're working with making sure that customers can reimagine the applications, transform their infrastructure, make sure that they actually have end-to-end -end security and can collaborate across these wonderful tools that we have so yeah. that hybrid work is uh, yeah. no longer something that's an anomaly but, um, but, but, a, but a reality that's going to yeah. persist, but we shouldn't feel the distance when people are away from each other. And you guys have all the technology to connect it from the packets to the app. I mean, we, we've been spoiled and actually it's, yeah. it's great to see the uptick of the technology appetite yeah. you know, within our customers, they love the new WebEx and all the things that we've done around it, so it's, yeah. uh, and, 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 and you know, security is a core part of it. You got a tailwind for sure. J2, thanks for coming on. Hey, thank I you know for you're me. super busy, great to have you on, appreciate it, yeah. Such a pleasure. All right, Take care. the Cube coverage kicking off uh, RSA Conference 2023 in the Broadcast Alley, Moscone West, four days of live coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host. We'll be right back with more coverage after this short break.